Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator or in this case just welcome back to the channel because we're actually talking about Pimax in general and them joining with OpenXR and QuadViews. Stick around to find out why that is a huge deal. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining us on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future releases that come down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below. All right, so first let's start with the basics. For those of you who don't know by some chance what OpenXR is and why this is such a big piece of information to us in the VR community. OpenXR is a runtime. Essentially, it manages the communication, as it says here in the article as well, manages the communication between your VR headset and basically your PC or whatever simulator you're playing or game you're playing. Okay, it's what trans or allows those two pieces of of, of software slash hardware to communicate with each other. All right, so that's your runtime. Okay, all of the default runtimes, for example, the most common one that we would use today and prior to OpenXR is Steam VR. Steam VR, it works, but it is not optimized. It is not efficient. It is very poorly handled. Like, and I really don't care who hears that, says that, whatever. You know, Steam, if you guys happen to hear it, fix it. You know, <laughs> but Steam VR, uh, when it comes to the run times and the and uh, the comparison between OpenXR and Steam VR, Steam VR is garbage. It really is. Um, it, it's significantly slower. You get m much less. Uh, frame rate, much less performance out of Steam VR than you do with OpenXR. And I think it's just OpenXR is much lighter. It doesn't have all the other garbage and junk running in the background. It's streamlined specifically for virtual reality and it's designed specifically to optimize that communication between the two uh, environments so you get the best experience in your headset. OpenXR was developed by the Kronos Group, is what they call themselves, and unfortunately, a while back, they announced that they were no longer going to be continuing development on it, and they were basically going to leave it up to VR developers, such as Pimax, to start either integrating it with their software or you know, making a software of their own that was going to be compatible. They basically stated, hey, you know, we've done what we feel we needed to do. We've proven that it can work. We've proven that it can, you know, that developers can do this. Basically, in many ways, the way I interpreted it this is my interpretation of it is called out developers saying, stop being lazy and make VR work, right? We've proven that it can happen. So, then you also have another developer, this is really crucial to all of this, and we'll get into the big meat and potatoes here, of Mbuchia, I hope I said that right, um, who developed the Pimax XR, which was, again, an extension of OpenXR, but designed specifically around Pimax, okay? Um, you guys know that Pimax um, has the largest field of view, it has the... Um, they have usually the highest resolutions depending on which headset you're comparing it to, but pretty much they have the largest field of views and the bigger uh, or the higher resolution numbers. Um, so they require the most horsepower. Uh, they really do. Um, and so the fact that this was developed specifically for the Pimax is a big deal. Now again, what this developer had stated was that he was no longer going to be continuing development on it unless a situation happened that he felt basically broke his, right? Um, that he would put out a release if that was the case. If there was a game-breaking situation and it affected him, he would, you know, put out a new release. Well, now some of this has changed. So now what's happening is you have the Pimax Play, which is the Pimax software. For those of you who are on Oculus, same thing with the Oculus software, right? You have the Pimax Play. Pimax Play is now going to be fully integrated with the OpenXR or Pimax XR uh, toolkit. It's going to become part of the software. You guys can see here in the screenshot right there, the OpenXR runtime and Pimax uh, or, uh, is Pimax XR or Pimax OpenXR. That is huge. That means, so for those of you who don't understand that, A, that means that we no longer have to install a third-party software. Pimax XR and OpenXR, you would have to install yourself. You'd have to configure the games yourself or your simulators yourself. Now it's going to be default as the runtime with Pimax. That is going to be a very big deal. It's going to change the performance and the overall experience that you have in virtual reality 
with Pimax in general. It means that this guy right here is going to be a much easier thing for you to configure and customize to your own liking without having to go through hours and hours of testing back and forth and things like that. It Trust me, it's a really big deal. Uh, DCS World from Eagle Dynamics uh, also integrated OpenXR uh, natively with their software. You no longer have to install OpenXR to use OpenXR with DCS World. So more and more companies and more and more developers are starting to catch on to this. And I'm really glad that Pimax took this leap. This is going to be a very uh, big game breaker for me in my personal opinion. The other one is the quad views functionality. Quad views functionality, uh, it's another um, API that works with only certain um, softwares at the moment. I'm not going to go too far into, I was hoping they had a little bit more information on it. <sighs> My understanding is essentially what it does is it takes the, the rendering image, the rendered image, breaks it up into four quadrants, quad views, um, renders them at a lower resolution, then upscales them and then places them into your view as a single image. And uh, for example, again, this is another one where I know that this works with is DCS World. The um, uh, performance increase was dramatic. I mean, drastic, anywhere from 15 to 30 frames per second, depending on where your... your um, bottleneck right uh was so it all uh, and that always comes down to it guys it always also none of this is going to be um you know exempt from the fact that your hardware is also obviously going to be very dependent you know that's the whole reason why i upgraded my cpu recently i had a 3900 xt that was really starting to show its age i have the rtx 4080 which is great but my cpu couldn't keep up with the video card right so my bottleneck was in the main thread in the cpu right and that's the the main thread is going to be your communication between cpu and mother or and graphics card right and that's where my limitation was if that is a limitation that you are currently experiencing today, you are very likely still going to experience a lot of that no matter whether you do all this. It may get better. You may get a little bit more headroom, a little bit easier time, um, but it's still going to be a problem. So keep that in mind that computer hardware is never uh, pushed aside. It's never negated from any of these fixes and things like that. If your hardware can't keep up with what you're trying to do, you're going to be bottlenecked, right? So quad views is another one that works incredibly well uh especially in conjunction with open xr so you have the open xr runtime the quad views uh api i believe is what it is uh you bring those together and my overall performance change in dcs world before i upgraded my cpu uh, like I said, was I being? It was right around 25 to 30 frames per second uh, while maintaining fairly high graphic settings in DCS World. So again, if this is something that is going to be compatible with things like Microsoft Flight Simulator, which we already know that OpenXR is, this is going to be a really big leap, in my opinion, for Pimax. I think it's going to take Pimax above a lot of the others because the experience is going to be significantly smoother. It's already integrated into their own software. You don't have to worry about juggling around and dealing with Steam VR anymore. That is huge. Right now, you have to manually tell Pimax not to use Steam VR. That's no longer going to be the issue when they go to the OpenXR runtime natively in Pimax Play. Steam VR will, I imagine, still be an option as it is today, uh, even where we switch it manually. Uh, but it's no longer going to be the default runtime, which will be massive. That is a huge deal. That is a big change. Uh, for those of you who are just coming into the virtual reality world, maybe starting to look at a headset, this is a very big reason to look at Pimax. Now, guys, I'm going to end this video by saying I am a Pimax fanboy. I have been a Pimax fanboy ever since their first release. Now, that is not to say I have used uh, HP. I have used the Oculus. I've had three, four different variants of the Oculus, starting with the original Rift, uh, or excuse me, the CV1. Um, I have uh, had the... Um, uh, there's been a couple. I, I can't remember the, the one that just left the consumer's market. I don't know why I'm brain farting. I've had four different developer models of, of VR headsets is, is the long and short, okay? And I have purchased and owned every single variant that Pimax has released since their inception. The only ones that I, the first one that was ever provided to me by Pimax was the Pimax Crystal and then now the Crystal Light. But all of them before them, which was the Pimax, the Pimax 4K, the Pimax 5K, 5K Plus, and the 8K, 8KX, I purchased with my own money. Okay, so 
thousands of dollars. Um, and how do you become a fanboy? You become a fanboy by getting with something and going, wow, this is really great. So I want to stress that, that my opinions, yes, sound like I'm fanboying, fanboying and it's because I am. Uh, but I'm a fanboy because, in my opinion, they put out a really good product. Yes, sometimes Pimax can release their products a little too soon. Yes, sometimes they can be a little finicky and a pain in the ass, I said it, to get working. But once you do, it's a phenomenal experience and you usually don't have to touch anything ever again. So keep that in mind. And I will say that experience also has changed dramatically with the latest release of their Pimax Play. Uh, it's pretty much, it, they're coming very close to a plug and play solution now. So, and OpenXR is just going to help them hit that even further. Well, I've rambled on enough, guys. I hope you guys found this as exciting as I do. Uh, this is a major change. It's going to be a really great um, um, boost for Pimax in general um, and require a lot less work on our end to get the Pimax Crystal and Crystal Lights running absolutely fantastic, uh, which I can already vouch for. I use OpenXR to this day. I've used it since its inception. So keep that in mind, guys. I hope you guys found this useful. As always, stay safe and healthy. See you in the next one.